Hi there, I'm this is Obri Chalke. I'm a teacher for business studies and today in our lesson we're going to be focusing on the management tasks or the tasks of management and this lesson is proudly brought to you by HLJ Tutorials. So um, before we proceed with our discussion, we first need to be able to define the management task. We need to be able to understand what are we talking about when we talk about the management tasks. And this specifically speaks about the duties that managers need to be able to fulfill in order for the organization to be able to succeed. So sometimes when they give a definition of this concept, they will play around with like activities duties or responsibilities and sometimes tasks all you need to do is to just have a basic idea of what is happening around this and one thing that you also need to pay attention is that the more you go up in the level of the organization or in the management of the organization the more you will have to undertake certain responsibilities if i'm a top level manager at an organization I will have a lot of responsibilities to fulfill and this is why if you check most of the top level managers in organizations they earn a lot of money compared to lower level managers and also if you check most of the managers most of the top level managers in organizations they have lucrative benefits when you compare them to managers who are at the lower level so in a nutshell the more you have a top position the more you will have certain responsibilities to fulfill by versa. the first task that we have to look at is called planning in terms of planning what we are trying to do as an organization is that we are trying to identify the tasks or activities that need to be done in order for the organization to be able to reach its goals and we also provide answers to the sequence in which we want the tasks to be done we may have a question to say how will those activities be done and this is why planning is important because it will tell us the sequence in which the activities will be done and then also through planning we are able to identify the kind of resources that we are going to need to be able to fulfill the tasks that need to be done successfully. And the planning also helps us to be able to know how long our activities will take us, the time frame, you know. It gives us an idea to be able to manage our time. This is why um, some organizations are able to know that if they want to produce maybe let's say um, 10, thousand cars they are able to know that they may need to introduce um concepts like or things like overtime and so forth and this is because they have taken the time into consideration they have noticed that with the time that they have at hand it will be impossible for them to be able to produce those kind of products without introducing overtime so planning gives an idea in terms of how long um you know whatever that we want to do will take and it gives us an idea in terms of whether we should make some adjustments or not when you proceed with business studies you'll learn about things like production schedule and so forth which will show um the time and the sequence in which production will take place okay and even in our daily lives we also plan in the morning when you wake up you plan based on how you want your day to be like what are the things that you want to do or achieve at the end of the day and how exactly are you going to do that so in a nutshell planning is very important it's very beneficial to plan because you are able to know how you're going to be doing certain things that you want to do you are able to know exactly what is it that um you are going to do and in which sequence are you going to do that and what are the resources that are you going to need for you to be able to do what you need to do another example that i can give you is um the one that relates to what we normally do at school um you know as a student teacher one of the things that i've realized is that we have timetables at school 
and in terms of that the those timetables we are able to know which period will be able to take place at this particular time we are able to know which teachers are going to be uh, able to teach in that particular day and what is it that those teachers will be needing in order for them to be able to teach so it somehow relates to what we're talking about the tasks that need to be done you can relate it to uh, the teaching you know and then the sequence you can look at um, related to the periods in which um, these lessons will occur and then in terms of identifying uh, the necessary resources um, to be used you can look at things like teachers needing markers teachers needing textbooks you know projectors and so forth and then in terms of the time frame how long will the teachers teach maybe 45 minutes for example per class you know so through planning we are able to look at such things i hope this makes sense now the next item is called organizing organizing is very important in an organization when we organize we look at the tasks that need to be done and then from those tasks that need to be done we are then able to assign the resources that we need to be used to achieve those tasks that need to be done like for example one of the things that we need to be able to organize in the business is the human resources the people who are the people who will be doing certain tasks like for example if you go to a factory you will realize that there are people who are responsible for um, producing certain products there are people who are responsible for you know packaging and so forth there are people who are responsible for transporting raw materials within the factory you know and then all this is able to be done through planning and after planning is done then people were assigned to this particular tasks or duties that needed to be done for production to take place so when you talk about organizing you're talking about looking at the tasks that need to be done and then setting aside specific resources that will help us as an organization to be able to do those tasks and then normally in terms of organizing what you do as a manager is that um you will tell people what you expect from them you will tell them exactly what you want them to do and then from there you will give them the necessary resources that they will need to use to be able to do what you want them to do like for example for me as a student teacher um the principal will tell me or even my senior teacher will tell me what he or she wants me to do um, what topic does she want me to do and then she will even provide me with the material that I will need to be able to use um, to teach the lesson and then she will tell me the learning outcomes that I'm expected to achieve at the end of the day okay and then they will also provide me with resources like textbooks you know a laptop if it's necessary um, some notes then they're from the department uh, annual teaching plan and so forth and all of this will help me to be able to do what I need to do. So in a nutshell, when you talk about organizing, you're talking about looking at what must be done and providing those resources that are needed to be able to do what needs to be done. Um, the next item that we'll look at is leading. The next task to be discussed is leading. Leading provides or refers to guiding your employees, becoming an example to them, you know, motivating them to be able to achieve certain duties. Um, as a manager, you want to have employees who are motivated. You want to have employees who have the zeal to be able to do their jobs. So as a manager, what you do is that you encourage your employees. You make them to believe that what they are going to do or what they are doing, the tasks, the responsibilities that they are given, the responsibilities that they are expected to undertake are important. You encourage them, you know, for them to see value in what they are doing so that the organization can be able to achieve um, its goals. And as a leader or as a manager, you act as an example. I mean, you can't tell me to do specific duties while you as a manager, while you as my superior, 
you not do what you're supposed to do. I have to look up to you as an example. You need to encourage me as my manager, you know. Serve, serve as an example to me. Show me how to do the job. Have a discussion with me. Um, explain certain duties that I have to do. Uh, explain them to me in such a way that I'm able to, to, to understand, you know. And this is why we have things like job description so that employees can be able to understand what they're expect, expected to do, you know, job description, job specifications, you know, explaining how they are supposed to do what they are expected to do, you know. And also, one of the things that can help managers to motivate their employees is when there's open communication. Talk to your employees, um, you know, have an open communication policy with them. Let them know that anytime when I have a problem, I can talk to my manager. So one of the tasks that managers have to do is to provide leading, you know, provide leadership in the organization. Let people know, let your employees know that we can rely on you. We can talk to you anytime when we need help. So what managers do is that they create communication line with employees. Um, I've seen in some certain organizations where they will have suggestion suggestion boxes, you know, things like that, where employees are able to write down their suggestion to management, you know, telling them maybe where they feel there needs to be some improvements and so forth. And in such a way, when you communicate with your employees, they feel that they play an integral part in the success of the organization. And if I feel that like I'm important in the organization, I will do whatever that it takes to help the organization to achieve its goals. And that's what we're talking about when we say leading. An example that I can give you is when I've seen in some certain organizations where they will provide awards to best employees, you know, just to encourage them to keep on working hard and then sometimes they will take employees to team building uh you know trips or you know team building conferences and so forth just so that the employees can be motivated and have an understanding of what the organization wants to achieve and what some managers do is that each and every day they make sure that they remind the employees uh, that they met, that they remind them of um, what the organization wants to achieve and they actually show them what they can do to contribute towards the organization achieving its goals. Any manager who treats his or employees well and encourages them and builds a relationship with them is more likely to have a successful organization. I've actually seen in the U.S., where um, some organizations are actually um, recognizing their employees as assets. And if you look at it carefully, you realize that employees are assets because without them, without their contribution, without their skills, organizations cannot be fruitful. Organizations cannot um, achieve their goals. There's no organization that can operate without a human being. So this is why some companies are recognizing their employees as their assets. And then if you notice some employees um, or some organizations, like for example, if you look at football teams, um, one thing that we are not really aware of is that their players are their assets. Because without players, football teams cannot ex exist. Without players, they can never be football. And if you look at such organizations, you look at clubs like Kings and Chiefs, there are some players that are paid the highest money because they bring value to the organization, because they help the organization to be able to achieve its goals. And then also when it comes to, you know, motivating employees, there are many things that can motivate employees. Some employees are motivated um, by, you know, rewards that they can touch. While some employees, like rewards that they can touch, um, it's things like um, money, you know, certificates. And some employees are motivated by 
um, rewards that are internal like for example me telling you that I appreciate you me letting you know that you've done a good work me letting you know that you are a good addition or asset to the organization me telling you that you play a huge role in us as an organization being able to achieve our goals so leading is all about motivating your employees seeing value in them and making sure that they become their best to be able to help the organization to achieve its goals i hope this makes sense so as a leader motivate your employees encourage them believe in them communicate with them show them how to do their works explain to them sit down with them explain the vision of the organization to them explain what they are expected to do show them that they matter in the organization um the last task that we're going to be looking at is controlling or, or evaluating um you know it doesn't matter if we plan but it will be a problem if we plan and then we never go there to check if what we have really planned is actually taking place you know sometimes in life you can plan and it can happen that whatever that you've planned doesn't happen as you wished for it to happen but what matters is that we need to be able to evaluate we need to be able to check if what we have planned is actually happening it will be useless for us as an organization to plan but never really implement that plan so um what controlling is we are checking is what we have planned actually being done is what we have planned uh, actually happening in the organization um, like for example if maybe we have planned that we want to produce um, you know the highest quality that we have never produced in the factory what we will do to be able to check if we are in the process we will do um, inspections you know surprise visits in the factory to check um, are the purchasing managers buying the right raw materials and so forth and then sometimes we we'll even want to check um at the production schedule are we in line with what we have planned we'll check what did we plan we'll achieve at this particular period and what have we exactly achieved in that period like for example even you as a student you plan right you would say okay <clears throat> i want to get 80 percent and then after you've planned to get that 80 percent um you write your exam or whatever or test you write and then after you are done writing you will get your results and then when you get your results you will compare you'll make some comparisons to say you will check between what you have planned to get and what you have actually achieved and then from there you want to check why did i achieve what i wanted to achieve what caused me to not achieve um what i wanted to achieve so you'll be looking at the deficiencies to say um what is it that caused me to deviate from my goal and then from identifying those deficiencies then you'll come up with corrective measures to say okay maybe i didn't study enough let me start studying each and every day 30 minute minutes i study business studies every day just so that i can be more familiar with content and then you do that you correct so even in the business after we have set goals we have to come back and check are we achieving what we have intended to achieve if we're not achieving what we have intended to achieve then what can we do to be able to recover or to at least come closer towards achieving what we want to achieve uh, like for example maybe if we have planned to produce um 20 000, uh cars let's say we are producing Toyota cars if we have planned to produce 20,000 Toyota cars, when we do the controlling part, we compare what did we plan? We plan to produce 20,000 cars and then come back and check. Did we really produce 20,000 cars? And then maybe let's say if the actual production shows that we produced 15,000 Toyota cars, we we'll then check what is it that we can do? What is the corrective action that we can do um to reach that 
um, 20,000 production of two other cars and maybe we can say okay let's then um, introduce over time to cover for that 5,000 unit that shop and then from there we do that we introduce over time and then when we do this we are doing what we call controlling we are identifying evaluating to identify deficiencies that have occurred and take some corrective measures to be able to solve that problem so that we can achieve the goals that we have planned in the beginning so um all these tasks are very important in the organization so when we do them we need to do them in such a way that at the end of the day we are able to achieve our goals thank you for watching please subscribe to our youtube channel at hl at um Aubrey child and like our facebook page at hlk.tutorials.co.za follow us on twitter at hlk2tutorials god bless you